So are you studying towards a pen test certificate such as OSCP, but unsure on the best way to take notes? Well, today I'm going to show you my methodology. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. So this is actually a question that I get asked actually quite frequently and I've avoided making a video because I naturally sort of just thought it was quite intuitive. But that being said, not everybody sort of learns the same way or has the same sort of skills when it comes to these things. So I just thought I'd show off my methodology and hopefully you'll find something useful from it. Now to start things off, I actually use OneNote for my note taking and there's multiple reasons for this. To start with, it will automatically sync to my Office 365 account, meaning that my notes are basically across any computer that I use. On top of that, I just have a preference on how I can categorize all my notes. So as you can see, I've got a tab for the PWK machines, Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Proving Grounds, and the exercises from the PWK labs, as well as my cheat sheets. So in each tab, I've basically got a list down the side of the machine by name and grouped by its operating system. And I've done that in the PWK tab as well and divided them based on the networks. So then I'll have a single page for the entire machine. I'll run you through what I did for this machine right here. So to start with, I always take a lot of screenshots and to do this, I just use the Microsoft Snip tool because it's just nice and easy, copy paste things straight in. I do a bit of highlighting as well, just to highlight things that don't instantly come across as to me as recognizable. So I can go back at a later time and do a bit more research on it. So as you can see, I've basically just got my screenshot for my Nmap scan and I always then summarize it by manually writing out what was open and just doing a bit of research on it. So it was SSH version 7.9. I know there's no exploits for that. And then we had HTTP, which was Nostromo 196. So that was clearly the exploit path as well as nothing else there. As you can see, then I have a few headings for different activities like I try. So in this instance, I've got a heading for web enumeration. I go through that. And by this point, I've got a user on the system. It wasn't particularly hard. I then always upload Windows or Linux Ps and I perform an analysis on that and I'll always take screenshots on the big, most common areas of privilege escalation, such as sudo, SUIDs, random files, log files, things like that. So as you can see, I've taken a screenshot for each. There was a password hash, which I put down into there. And I highlighted a few things that came across as a bit unique to me. I've got a heading for the password crack that I did and I made sure to include a screenshot of this. And basically you may see that I just write a lot of notes to myself. And this is really helpful because if I'm writing in just plain English to myself, like I can't think of where these creds will be used, at least I'm sort of internalizing this. It's kind of like rubber ducky debugging if you've ever heard of that. And it's just quite easy for me to come back and really reflect on the notes. I also use some colors and I use red for when I use uh, hints or solutions. So in this instance with the privilege escalation, I kind of needed a bit of a hint. So here I've just got a hint from IP being IPSEC where I just basically said, yeah, I was kind of right on the path, but I didn't quite work it out. And this is what I missed. I then continue with more enumeration, have all the screenshots for it. And again, lots of notes to myself and just the overall process in what I did to solve this machine and get the user. Now I'm not gonna go into too, too much details as this isn't a walkthrough for this machine, but this is just basically a high level view. So now I'm on the user, I can just continue doing my normal privilege escalation method as you saw by just copying and pasting things that I pick out from WinPs or any files that immediately catch interest. So in this instance, there was the servicestat.sh. So then I basically work through that, have screenshots, even if I'm getting close, even if it doesn't work, I like to include screenshots. I included a screenshot from uh, GTF Obins, thinking that could have been the solution as well. Um, and you see, eventually I finally get it um, by exploiting that service. Lastly, you'll see that I include a bit of a reflection at the end. This one was quite short. It's basically like a TLDR summary of the machine, what I thought went well, what I thought didn't go well, if I used solutions, what I needed help with, so I could make sure that I wouldn't forget it after 
I've learnt it. And, you know, even if, even though I'm using the solutions for a particular part, I'm still learning from that process. So basically, that's what I do for each and every machine. And it, I will admit this process does get a little bit tedious, but it was really helpful to have those really detailed notes, especially if you get in the habit of doing this, then doing the lab report for your OSCP will be a piece of cake. Next, I wanted to go over my cheat sheet. Before anybody asks, I will not be making this public because I believe there's just a lot of value in creating your own cheat sheet. A lot of people do it on Git. For me, it just made sense to do it on OneNote where I have all my notes consolidated in one spot. So as you can see down the side, I've got a lot of headings for different areas. So I've just basically got this little stuck thing here, which is just a few notes to myself on common things to try. I've got the entire buffer overflow process. And most importantly, I've got this common tab here. These, I think, are some of the most important things that I needed throughout my process. So this included uh, file transfers on PowerShell, CMD, TFTP, FTP, Netcat, basically anything that you could think of, anything that would be common amongst most systems, I would include a file transfer command for that for both upload and download and multiple backups because you never know when something won't work. Exactly the same thing for uh, reverse shell one-liners or just shell one-liners. One I've got a few for PHP, PowerShell, Metasploit Framework, Bash, so on and so forth. Some cheat sheets for MSF Venom as well. Some things for SQL injections, local and remote file inclusions, basically a lot of things along here, especially for all the privilege escalation vectors as well. As having these commands just easily at your disposal just saves me a lot of time and makes me not have to commit them to memory. And I know that I've got backups if something doesn't work. So there you have it. That's basically my methodology for note taking and my cheat sheet. And I hope you found something useful from it. If you did, be sure to leave this video a like because it really helps me out and it helps people like you find content like this. If you do something different in your note taking, be sure to leave a comment and let us all know. Anyway, I've been Jason from Jason Sec. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.